everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a voiceover while you watch me paint this big piece. I think this might actually be the biggest piece I've ever done. I did this painting as a gift for my father. This is the house that I would have grown up in. It was an old stone cottage. My father would have done an awful lot of work on it to make it what it was. He worked on it for all like 25 years that he lived there. He never stopped working on it. So it was a really big project to him and they've since sold it and moved out of it. So it's no longer our home anymore, but hopefully somebody else's. So I thought this would be a sweet little piece for his birthday for him of a place that was special to sort of all of us. It was a gorgeous cottage with lovely old mature trees and a really big garden and very classic stone Irish cottage. It was really old as well. It was like over 400 years old, I think. I might be wrong on that, but it was. I know it was a very, very old house as well. So lots of history with it as well, a really cool place to grow up in. There was definitely magic there, I'd say that for certain. For this painting, I am using oils on a canvas from Jackson's Art. I will link all the materials that I'm using for this painting down below. Like I said, the base is all in oils and then I go over top with colored pencils, pastels and oil pastels. That's what I'm going to be working on during this video. And in the meantime, I said I would just chat about what's going on in my life and answer a couple of questions that I got on Instagram as well. So I suppose the first thing that I want to talk about that I probably haven't talked about since or that has happened in my life since I last like properly had an uploading streak. I know you, I had that haul video but before that I hadn't uploaded in so long and I know a majority of people here probably follow me on my other art accounts on Patreon or Instagram or TikTok or whatever but I actually, in September, I handed in my notice to the job I worked at and decided to go full time into art, basically just working on creating art, <laughs> which is insane to say still, I, I still cannot believe that I've done this. I'm a very risk adverse person and I am very much someone who has always played it safe in life and very by the book kind of person. So for me to make a decision like this was, whoa, it was crazy for me to make a decision like this. My notice period was two months. So then in November, I stopped working that job. I'm at it a solid two months now. And obviously I am making significantly less income than I was before. <laughs> I won't deny that my income is less less by a lot. For myself and my like soul and my happiness, I'm, I cannot say it was a bad decision by any means. It was so, it was so perfect. I, it was meant to be, I think. I spent so long in a career that just wasn't for me. I was fine at the jobs I worked at. Um, I was a quality engineer in first pharmaceuticals and then on to medical devices. That was my kind of career path and my undergraduate degree was in genetics and cell biology. My career and my studies were absolutely not related to art at all. Art was just something I did in the background and I've always painted and I've always been an artist in that sense that I've always created and painted and drew and all that stuff from for all of my life I've done this but it never started occurring to me that it could be a potential career for myself until I started a job in 2020 that I, I really didn't enjoy and it really really started to make me think oh my god am I going to be doing this until I'm 60 70 years old which is wild I just thought there's no way I can do this I can't I can't do this for the rest of my life not a hope so I started to reevaluate my life choices and I considered going back and studying other things like other science routes and stuff like that I I really enjoyed um the actual lab work that I would have done during 
certain jobs and work experiences but um I would have had to to go do the exact job I wanted to do which was medical science uh, I would have had to go do a full undergrad again because there was no options for master's courses to do in Ireland at the time which was that's crap if anybody is in charge of that who's listening to this change that there used to be a master's course but they got rid of it but yeah and then I started considering doing a master's in illustration but at the same time we were saving up to buy this house and I just really wanted to pour all of my funds into buying a house and so my money was focused on saving for a house deposit completely and I didn't want to sacrifice that for education then I started to post more online I, I used to post my art just on my personal Instagram account just Willy nilly, you know, it was I wasn't serious about it. Then in 2020, I think it was 2020, it could be in 2019, I started my Instagram account that I have now. And I started pouring more time into creating a presence for myself online, just with the kind of idea that maybe I could open a shop someday and maybe make some additional income. At the time I had very little confidence in my artistic abilities and I was very much still trying to find myself and find out what kind of style I liked. You, if you scroll way back on my Instagram to the very bottom you'll see my style is nothing like what it is now and then over time as you scroll up you'll see it develop more and more. But yeah, so that was 2020 um, in a job I hated and started doing this on the side. Then I would say we go onwards to 2022, I started a different job, which was for a startup. And it was better than the other job because it allowed me more flexibility and allowed me to work from home, which meant I wasn't commuting kind of for like an hour and a half two hours every day which gave me back more time in the evenings and then I started to like ramp up the amount of work I put into art again then and really start focusing more on it and I started to consider that maybe I could actually make some viable income from art but I was far too much of a baby and again like I said far too risk adverse to take any chances on it because I'm someone who always thinks I'm not good enough for this. I'm not skilled enough. Like, if I had the skills to do this, it would have magically fallen into my lap without putting any work in, which obviously that's not how any of this works. <laughs> I went on and on in that job, but again, I was really having those like itchy, itchy feet. Is that a, a saying? <laughs> Cold feet? Itchy feet? I don't know. I was getting an itch anyways that I again this career choice just wasn't for me I I again I was fine at the job I could do the job fine but I just wasn't enjoying it and I would get the the classic Sunday scaries so like Sunday night I would always be in a bad mood and it's like oh it's Monday tomorrow and I have to go back and I have to log on to work and I have to do all this stuff that I don't care about I just I didn't feel passionate about it and it wasn't a me thing I don't think <laughs> so then in 2023 I really started to reconsider my whole life choices and everything and my mental health was just not in a good space because of my career mainly I just you know you'd see all these other people and they all seem to have life figured out and understand what they want to do and then I just felt like I was there like I'm lost and I have no idea like like being an artist is that a job you can do really I feel like it's only the rare few people on the internet who can do this and there's no way I would ever be one of those people on the internet right so I started trying hard to improve my mental health and stuff but I and I did improve it in some ways but at the end of the day I really had like an epiphany moment in the summer of 2023 where I was like I have to change this I have to just give this a solid go I have to try because if I don't try I'll never know in March of 2023 I had set up my Patreon and I was making income off of my Patreon that was enough to pay my half of the mortgage and I was like that's a really good like income to make just on the side and then I had my shop I set up my shop in the summertime and that started drawing an in income and from there I just started really thinking this this is actually something that is sort of achievable like maybe I can do this and at the 
at that stage like I was working my full time job and I was working art and the full time job was making me miserable and the art was making me happy and I was just kind of like don't I deserve to have this happiness like don't I don't I deserve to give this a go and and do this like why why would I be any different to anyone else what about me means that I can't do it whereas other people can do it I do have the skills I'm actually not crap at art believe it or not I I just had that epiphany I was like why am I being so harsh on myself and why am I telling myself that this is something I can never do if I never go out there and actually try it and actually put myself out there to do it so had lots of long talks with everyone close to me in my life had lots of tears lots of genuine mental breakdowns like I lost so much of my hair during this period I was so brimming with anxiety that like a load of my hair started falling out and I was like you know that's a physical sign that something isn't right here so all those things kind of all came on top of me at once and I was like okay drastic life change here we go (laughs) so yeah then come September handed in my notice and said boom let's go for it all that to say I really I really want to stress the fact that I could not do this if it wasn't for my partner he's an amazing man and the most supportive person I could ever imagine and my family were lovely and supportive as well but from the financial aspect as well I could not do this without him he's works in a decent paying job in a stable field that he can kind he's very employable so we were like okay financially he could support what I wouldn't be able to provide anymore so um shout out to Noel I love you you're the best person ever (laughs) can't wait to marry you (laughs) Um, all that happened um and I'm doing so much better mentally I I'm still astonished at the fact that I do this for a job now Ah, so I will say it was a struggle at the start to just get used to all of these changes and the inconsistency isn't the right word but the fact that like I had no consistent routine and I'm a very I love lists and I love organizing things and making to-do lists so I thought I would fly it at that um but I think I got a bit of a shock when like I I'd say it's only this month now in February that I've really started to buckle down and work towards longer term goals I think that was the thing that like I was still just continuing to do what I did when I was working the two jobs at once and I think I came to a realization that now is a time where I can work on longer term goals and longer term plans so that's now what I'm focusing on expanding my portfolio and hopefully uh, branching out into more illustration jobs like I really 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 want to do children's book illustration so I'm doing the good ship illustration course I'm trying to expand my portfolio trying to try out loads of different things um and now that I have the time to do that and explore those things slowly and at a healthy pace I think it's really good that's what happened in my life in the past like six months pretty wild changes but uh, all for the better I think it was really all for the better so on to questions on Instagram um I didn't get many questions on Instagram but I will say them anyways one of them is how do you never run out of landscapes to paint (laughs) I don't know I I a lot of these questions I feel like is going to be similar answers in the sense that I'm like inspired by the world around me like I'll be out for a walk with the dog and I'll see a certain texture of like moss on a rock and be like I love that and then I'll start thinking about it and imagining what I could do with that or I'll see colors and things and take photos of them and be like I love those colors and stuff and can I take it from there that's how I tend to be just inspired by things and inspired by what's around me and also just random epiphanies like right when I'm trying to fall asleep I'll have like oh my god I should paint that that's such a good idea (laughs) yeah I just I I look at everything around me and I find inspiration just in in life that surrounds you I think like literally going around and just taking a walk in a park or a forest near you and you can see if you like take time and actually look at everything 
there's so much there that can be translated into paintings and even tiny tiny things just like like i said there's like a moss and a rock like that could turn into a whole world you could have something tiny that lives in that moss and is there a little house there do they have a little house inside the rock and the moss is the roof and it's the little insulation on the roof for the thing that lives in the rock and do they have little holes carved into the rock as like windows and is there like warm light seeping through the windows things like that like but again for like my plain my plain I say plain they're usually loads of magical colors but for my ordinary landscapes I just it's what I see around me I live in the countryside in the west Ireland like and that's what it looks like there'll be rolling hills and fields and there'll be a little lonely house of the farmer who lives there and manages all those fields and all the sheep that's it like I look out my window and I'm surrounded by fields and stone walls you just look at your surroundings and find inspiration where you are the next question is how do I pick my materials brush size color combinations etc for a piece so brush sizes I really I only work with really two brushes for most of my pieces and they are the Richard Oliver um, round brush and flat brush. I use the round brush for smaller details, I use the flat brush for big washes and then I'll use the flat brush dry for kind of textural pieces. I don't branch out too much for my brushes. I did get a fan brush that you saw in that haul video there and I really like that for doing sort of streaky details. For things like color combinations um if i'm working off of a reference and i want to keep it realistic enough similar to how i'm doing for this painting like you know i'm doing blue sky brown and grays for the actual house and then loads of different shades of green for the trees and the foliage and the grass but then for other pieces and I talk way more in depth on this on my patreon I have a color guide on my patreon on how to kind of build color palettes so I'm not going to talk at length about that here because you can get that for the get access to that at the lowest tier on my patreon the pond pals it's a full written guide with illustrations and explanations on how i pick color so good old self-insert advertisement there today we're sponsored by me <laughs> i tend to pick color palettes that i i really tend to be intuitive with my color palettes i think that's a crap answer though so i'll try and give you a better one mostly i kind of think about the mood that i want to go for do i want to have a dark mood and do i want it to be kind of creepy and dark and then i'll go for like muted tones and like dark shades of blue or green and keep it really really dark but then you want to add little pops of color where you want to draw the eye or create interest i feel like that's really important and then alternatively if i wanted to do a really bright piece i would stick with lots of bright greens and yellows and stuff like that i think one thing is also really good is mixing cool with warm in the same shade range so you'll see for the painting here the grass is a mix of really warm bright greens but then you have cooler greens as well mixed in along them and stuff and I just think that that creates an awful lot of variety because like you know so many people they will just do one straight wash of plain green and you know that's if I was to do one straight wash of plain green on this massive canvas that would look so boring and flat and uninteresting. Color palettes themselves I think come intuitively and it's all about the mood that you want to create like you want if you want sunsets you're going to pick warm pinks and oranges and stuff like that again all of this comes from life if you really analyze color in life you'll really start to understand how to use it like i think one simple thing is to just look at the colors if you look at even a wall and then you look at the different shades that you see on that wall just from different shadows and stuff like that like really look at them and think if i wanted a color match this by painting it how would i paint it so one kind of consideration that a lot of people don't take into thought is like how what colors do shadows cast and if you actually like look at them and understand it you'll see that like okay that's just a, a cooler toned or darker toned version of the color of the wall it's not black or gray and so building color palettes off of just variations of those things like just understanding that like you know 
your pink painted wall is going to have variations in saturation and shades of pink as opposed to just one big plain pink wall things like that just just observing color in daily life can really help you understand how color works in palettes like life really gives you the best opportunity to understand how color works because it does it automatically someone asked what are some art supply brands to avoid and what are some to go for i don't think i would like blanket statement to say that any of the art supplies i've bought are bad or that any ones that i use are particularly great or amazing or stuff like that i think I think it really comes down to an individual basis on how you want to use a certain material within your artwork. Like if I wanted colored pencils that like have really good blendability, one brand might suit me more than I if I was than how I use color pencils now. I never blend out my color pencils. I want really crunchy kind of texture with my color pencils, so I tend to prefer ones that like are a bit more softer or something like that like I it really depends on how you want to use materials so I use some materials that are incredibly cheap and I use some materials that are expensive and I really think unless you're concerned about like light fastness like for this painting here I, I would be using I'm using oil paints that have good light fastness because I know it's going to be displayed in a house and I wanted to ensure that the sun isn't going to fade it out within a couple of years. But if you're just doing work in your sketchbook, I really wouldn't say there's any brands that I particularly hate. Like the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head is, you know, those sets you get when you're a child and it has like a load of really chalky paints and markers and half of the markers are dried out already before you even open them. <laughs> That's the only that's the only art material that I can confidently say is crap. And even when I was a child, I thought they were kind of crap. That's the only material I can confidently say you can avoid. I have um, details on how I use mixed media on all the different types of mediums that I use and the brands of those that I use. And like for this video, I'll have everything linked below what I'm using for this painting. But I really don't think there's any brands that you should particularly avoid. I think that learning through experience of how you want to use colour pencils or how you want to use paints gives you an understanding of what you like. I really think it's trial and error and also what you can afford. The white oil paint that I use for my oil painting now is a tube of paint that I've had for the last 10 years I'd say and it was like 7 euro for like 250 mils of it and it's a really cheap own brand oil paint but it does the job and I can't want for anything else I'm not picky of brands and I'm I don't think you should be picky about brands I think you should just try out things if you see something that looks interesting try it and if it works for you it works for you I don't think there's a holy grail must have brand brands that I use for paints and both oils and gouache would be Windsor Newton and Holbein. They're my two main brands that I use for gouache um, and oils. Then for pencils, I use Holbein, Caran d'Ache and Prismacolor. My favourite being Caran d'Ache because I find that they're a little bit creamier and they layer on top of darker colours of gouache very well. And that's what I particularly look for in a pencil. The last question that I've gotten is how I found my art style and what my advice would be for a beginner artist. How I find my art style is literally just continuing to create. I don't think that anybody will ever have one fixed art style throughout their life. I think that art style is just kind of something that comes naturally through creating lots of art. It's not something that you can intentionally find. One tip that I would give is in order to sort of develop your own style is to observe other kind of other artists work and huge caveat here is do not copy other artists work that's not something I would ever recommend to anybody do not copy obviously doing like master studies is a different thing but just seeing someone's work on Instagram and creating a direct copy of their painting isn't going to teach you anything what I would recommend other than that is to if there's an artist that you love and you really like how 
their work looks I would try and look at their work objectively and analyze it and think what about this particular artist's work stands out to me and what do I actually like about their work that I don't see in other artists work and from there you can understand what particular things about their work speaks to you and then do that for 10, 15, 20, 100 other artists and then from that you'll pick and choose aspects that you like and they'll all sort of meld together and form your own style from observing life, observing colours in life, observing other artists, little quirks, things like that. They all come together like I there are some artists whose work I really like for using very bold flat brushes and just doing minimal strokes and I use that when I'm blocking in colour but then I don't use it for my final pieces you know that like being inspired by other artists has helped me understand how to like work my process and things like that and then you know trial and error as well just thinking would it be fun if I added a pop of colour and then suddenly you're adding pops of colour in all of your work you know it really is just experimentation trial and error and observation of art life everything absorb everything that you see and try and picture how you would create something out of what you're observing that's what I would recommend for other artists and to never stop painting or drawing or creating in whatever way you do it I would just always make something try and make it a habit like I've said this before it's like going to the gym you might not particularly want to but at the end of the day you know okay I want to keep my body fit and mobile so therefore I know I have to continue going to the gym even though it might not be your favorite thing in the world to do you make yourself go because you know at the end of the day it's going to make you feel better physically or mentally or whatever you're going to force yourself to go to the gym it's the same with art practice it really is just a habit that you kind of have to force to instill in yourself because it's never going to be it's never going to come easy all the time Of course, some days you're going to be like, oh, I'm so in the mood for this. Yes, and it will come really easily, but other days it won't. But those days you shouldn't not create. Obviously, you can't create every single day. I know we have lives, but you should try and make a habit out of it like three or four times a week. Draw or paint or sketch for five minutes even. Just do something creative and that will over time build up. No more than over time, your squat goes from five kilo squat to 75 you know you you will build up that over time it's just it's like a habit like more than anything else I find just keep keep at it <laughs> a bit of a crap uh, advice I'm not a very good advice person but I try so that is it for my voiceover for my life update for my crappy answers to good questions <laughs> If you have any other questions, please drop them below in the comments and I will try to respond or I will answer them in a Q&A portion of my next video as well. So thank you so much for watching this video, for listening to me ramble on for half an hour about myself. I couldn't listen to myself talk for half an hour. So if you got this far, thank you so much for your patience and tolerance for listening to me. Ugh. Like I said, everything will be linked down below, all my materials, my social media. I hope you loved watching me paint this very special painting. Subscribe if you would like to see more of my content. I aim to upload every other Friday. That's a bold statement. We'll see if I stick to it. (laughs) Anyways, thank you so much and have a lovely rest of your day. Bye.